Well, welcome to Power Code Music. In today's presentation, we're going to talk about a mastering process and simply explain it. Well, the mastering process in question is my mastering process. And with this, I'm going to tell you exactly how I master my music in detail. So sit back, relax, grab your coffee, and don't go anywhere. You're not going to want to miss it. But first, let's talk about mastering in general. Now, mastering is an expression that is generally used to refer to the process of taking an audio mix down and making it ready for distribution. This process takes into account several factors. Number one, ensuring that the overall recording sounds the same. Number two, if the recording is part of an album, ensuring that it sounds consistent with the rest of the songs in the collection. And number three, ultimately preparing the production for distribution. The purpose of mastering is to take your production to the next level, and that's the key. The mastering process should give the overall sound symmetry and make all parts of the recording work together and sound professional. Mastering also ensures playback optimization across different speaker systems and media formats which is common and expected for professional audio recordings. A common practice for mastering engineers is to apply equalization and dynamic range compression in order to optimize the audio on all playback systems. A good mastering process is an art form that requires patience and critical listening skills. Now, if this is not for you and it's not for everybody, then it's suggested that you work to find a mastering engineer for your music if you can. Now, audio mastering is the primary job of some audio engineers. Now, that's all they do. Prices for mastering songs can range anywhere from $10 to $150 per song or much more, depending upon who you use and where the process is performed. However, if none of the previous options are for you, then there is an alternate solution that involves using software tools to automatically master your songs. This includes online music mastering services like BandLab, Lander, and eMastered. There, you would upload your songs and select the parameters that you would like your song to sound like and a little more. Now, their software then applies this information to their process and produces your mastered song. Hmm. Now, if you use a digital audio workstation or a DAW, then there are also many software plugins on the market that you can use to automatically master your songs. So this includes products like Eventide Elevate Bundle and Waves Abbey Road TG Mastering Chain. Now, I can't recommend any of the mastering software or plugins for your doll that I just mentioned because I've, I've never used any of them. I master manually and I believe that mastering needs a human touch. It's just my opinion. Now back in the 90s I did a lot of mastering for clients in my home studio. They would drop off their mix downs and I would master them for a decent fee. <laughs> Good times. Now there are two approaches that I use to master in my studio. First, I record with the Tascam DP24 Digital Studio. Now that unit has built-in mastering functionality that's easy to use and works well. For more information and details on how to use mastering on the Tascam DP24, watch my video, Tascam DP24 Digital Porta Studio, Mastering a Recording on this channel. My second approach is using my external mastering process. I have a separate rack in my studio dedicated solely to mastering music. My mastering rack includes the following units. A Behringer FBQ 3102HD 31 band stereographic equalizer. A BBE Sonic Maximizer model 882i an Alesis 3630 compressor limiter with gate, and last but not least, a Tascam SD20M solid state recorder. And as you can see, this is the order they are placed 
in my mastering audio signal chain. Now, let's take a look at my external mastering process using these tools. The first thing I do in my external mastering process is I develop a plan. And the first point of that plan is who or what do I want to sound like? I always pick an example, even if it's one of my previous songs. Well, for instance, if I want a Fleetwood Mac type sound, then I'll select one of their songs that I want to sound most alike. Now, this will be the reference track that I use to compare my master against all throughout the mastering process. Once I'm satisfied with my mix down result using my DP24, I then route the stereo outputs from that device to my main mixer, which is the Eurodesk MX9000, which is right behind me here. From there, I can ensure the best possible levels for my pre-mastering mix. Now, if I'm using more than one source for my final mix, such as the outputs of my second uh, Tascam DP24 or anything else for that matter, then this is where they are combined and mixed again for pre-mastering using my Eurodesk MX9000. At this point, I'm able to add additional effects to the overall mix prior to mastering. For this, I use the Behringer FX2000 multi-effects processor. Now, for more information and details on how to use this specific unit, watch my video, Behringer Virtualizer 3D FX2000 multi-effects processor and why I use it on this channel. The XLR main outs from my primary mixing console behind me are routed to my mastering rack where the mastering process begins. In my mastering rack, the first unit is my Behringer equalizer. Now the model I use includes a spectrum analyzer that helps my eyes to see and fine tune frequencies that my ears don't catch. Now, if you're not familiar, a spectrum analyzer provides a visual of your audio sound and it deconstructs the audio spectrum showing you all of the levels of various frequencies in your audio signal. Now this provides high quality measurement results when analyzing ambient noise levels in a variety of real life scenarios. The next unit in my mastering signal chain is the sonic maximizer. I use this unit because speakers have problems processing signals from amplifiers. This issue causes significant phase and amplitude distortion that can lead to a speaker sounding much different than the original output origin of the audio signal. The integrity of the phase and amplitude in an audio signal is a requirement for accurate sound reproduction. I use this unit to compensate for this issue and to brighten up tracks in my mix as needed. For more information and details on how to use this unit, watch my video BBE Sonic Maximizer 882i Why and How I Use It on this channel. The next device in my signal mastering chain is a compressor. I use my compressor to reduce the dynamic range of my recordings by lowering the audio levels of the loudest sections. This means that the loudest and the quietest sections of the recording are moved closer together in volume, making the difference in audio volume less noticeable to the listener. After the audio signal is compressed, I boost it. The impact is that the quiet sections become boosted, which brings them closer to the louder sections. That's how that works. As a result, it's easier to control the dynamic range of an audio recording, which allows me to better manage how individual tracks sit inside of a mix. For more information and details on how to use this unit that is a compressor, watch my video, Alesis 3630 Compressor Limiter with Gate, why and how I use it on this channel. The final unit in my signal mastering chain is my two-track digital recorder. I use a dedicated standalone two-track mastering recorder to capture the mastered stereo production for archive and distribution. 
my two track hardware recorder is reliable, safe, easy to use, powerful, and should outlast all of today's software platforms. For more information and details on how to use this unit, watch my video, Tascam SD20M Solid State Recorder, why I use it on this channel. Now the next step in my mastering process is iterative and it includes critical listening over time. Now this covers the before and after sound comparisons at every stage of the process, as well as ensuring that the end process result is sonically acceptable. Last but not least, the final step in my mastering process involves removing any excess noise and adding any fade ins or fade outs to complete the master. For this I use Audacity, which is a free digital audio editor software application. The application has a host of other features, but that's all I needed to do. Now the result of my mastering process gives me a professional grade audio recording that's ready for both archiving and distribution. Well that is a wrap. If you like this video give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button on your screen now and join our group. We have new videos coming out every 7 to 10 days and we would love to have you be a part of our team. Leave a comment in the comment section below and let us know what you think about this video and check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. While you're here, listen to some of the music and check out some of the other videos. Let us know what you think about that too. Thank you so much for stopping by. We really appreciate it and we look forward to seeing you soon.